Them yellow bones, you say? Well, who's that? I heard that boy a whole. Yeah, he nice with them customs. Yellow bone, the neighborhood customizer. Yeah, that boy, wow. Now don't forget to subscribe. Hit that subscribe button down there before I start the video. I want to say it. Hit that subscribe button. Help your brother out. Share it with your friends and your like-minded hustlers. Let's go. What up, y'all? It's Yellow Bone, the neighborhood customizer, coming to you in the wee hours of the night. Check me out, man. I'm working on these grandpa hats. Um... Richardson 256, I believe, the Umqua model. And these hats can be troublesome. Um, but I'm here to show y'all how to do it, make it a little easier on you, all right? Check me out. So I pause my job over here. Um, you got your hat, of course, and what can make these tricky is one, they're really, really thin, really, really soft, really unstructured, right? And then they've got this little flap on the inside that makes them structured, right? So this little flap gives it a little bit of structure and height on it, but there's actually, without that, it's really flimsy. So that's one thing that gives it trouble. And then you also got that little flap that gives trouble, right? And I like to just flip my sweatband out per the usual. And then I flip that out with it, all right? And check me out. On the inside, this piece right here, you can tell I cut that away because it was coming down excess. And if you're stitching and that gets stitched with your design at the bottom, it's gonna pull that soft material down. It's gonna pull it down and cause a wrinkle effect in your hat. So try to cut that away as much as you can. Um, if you end up catching it, whenever you go in to take off your backing, whenever you see you got, you've already caught it, just cut it away. Go in between your design and that mesh piece and cut away where it's stitched onto it. And it'll let go of that hat and allow it to come up and not have that pull down wrinkle in the bottom of it. So let me show y'all how I hoop these real quick. All right, so I've got these out, right? Sweatband out, little tab out. I'm not gonna go underneath this tab like I usually would with the sweatband. I'm gonna go right over, take everything over it. And let me get y'all a little closer. Better view, maybe. So I take everything over it and I push my bill down and into that tab, see how I can move my rack. I push it down into that, and then I'm gonna hold it there in place while I get everything lined up, get my sweatband pulled down on both sides. All right, and this rope right here, this rope, all we're gonna do is gently pull it out the way and I'm going to come, you can hoop over the corners, but you don't want to hoop over that rope. You hoop over that rope, like keep the rope running the bill and hoop over it, you're going to slip off of it. So after I've got the hoop on there, not clamped, but on, give it a little light tugging, straighten it out, and we'll clamp it down. Now with these, because you are not underneath, and because you've got all this extra material up on top, when you clamp this down, if, you, if it is not a heavy clamp, if you don't clamp it really, really tight, really good, then it's going to end up whenever this is getting pushed, especially with the EM1010. That's why I keep the tape. That's why I keep the tape for the rubbing. Whenever that's pushing, this will slip out from your crease right here and end up down here. And then your design's gonna end up crooked. And I actually have an example. Because I did it earlier on one. You see how I ended up going crooked on my design there? That's because I didn't have my clamp tight enough. So what I like to do 
is after I've clamped it once and pushed everything down, I'll take the clamp off. I'll tighten it up just a little bit. And then I'll reclamp it. And this is gonna ensure that I've got that nice and tight. I'm gonna push this rope back up on there. I like to add two tabs of tape just to make sure that rope stays out of my way. Down in the corners, it's out the way of my design. Keep the rope out the way. And I put my tape on for protection of my bill. You can see where the machine is rubbing on this tape. This protects your bill from getting any rub marks, oil marks, anything from your machine. So now this hat is almost ready to go. Let me show y'all what I do to make up for the structure of this hat. So I take it and I like to just flip it into my legs. Let me see if I can get y'all a good angle here. An example. See how I caught that? Still got caught up on that under mesh even though I cut away. I didn't cut enough of it. See how I got a little bit of a wrinkle right here. I guess pulling it in. If I go in and cut away. Go in and cut that away and you can instantly see the difference in the bottom not being pulled down. All right, so I've got my cap right here between my legs on the driver. I've got a small piece about the same size as my bill of my hat. You can see this is about the same size as the front of the bill of the hat, okay? And I'm just gonna tuck this in. You've got your piece right here that I was talking about. They can catch that thread. That's where I'm gonna tuck this in at. And that's gonna work like a little holder for my backing. See that? Got it in there nice. And it's gonna give that hat, that structure that it wants, that natural structure that it has whenever it has that little tab up. So now, that hat is ready to go. Another tip whenever you're doing these hats, um, they don't have a center line running all the way down. So what I like to do is run me tape measure across. You got seven inches from this line to this line, your whole frontal plane. You've got seven inches, so three and a half inches is my middle mark. So I line up three and a half inches and I'm now centered where I need to be. Just a quick tip for you. All right, y'all, that's it, man. I just wanted to show y'all how I do these grandpa hats. Again, this is the one that I messed up. Um, I told you why earlier in the video, but these ropes can get in the way. Um, the sweatband tab underneath can get in the way. There's a lot of things that can get in the way of a successful stitch out on these hats, but I hope all these tips that I gave you are helpful. I hope that they, um, lead you to success whenever you're doing these so you don't have to turn these orders down never turn an order down i believe in that never turn the order down work hard at it figure it out okay um but that's it i appreciate y'all i hope this was very helpful i hope you were able to take something from this video i keep on having thread breaks right now i bet my tension is off um so i'm gonna go ahead and mess with that Y'all, if I am getting multiple thread breaks, um, especially if they're clean thread breaks, like it's not shredding on the top thread or anything, it's just like a clean break of that thread, 
um, and I keep getting it even after adjusting my tension and making sure that my tension is good and I keep getting these thread breaks, change your bobbin. Your bobbin is probably bad. You probably got to a part of the bobbin where it was wound incorrectly um, or maybe like a piece was coming through and it's messing up the threads and it's getting caught and whenever it catches it's snapping your thread that instant extra inch tension is snapping your thread so just a quick tip right there because i changed my bobbin changed my bobbin and it's been running like butter just had changed the bobbin i'm telling you blame the bobbin bro blame the bobbin he gonna be like shaggy it wasn't me I, 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 it was him. It was him, bro. Blame the Bobby in. Let me get these hats finished up and give me a little nap before I take off to work. You know what I'm saying? Uh, stay on that grind, y'all. Y'all know how I get down and y'all know how I encourage, bro. Stay on your grind. Push and fight for what you want. You know what I'm saying? Set your goals and reach for them. Don't care how hard it is. Do it. Do it. Stop feeling sorry for yourself. That's step number one. Stop feeling sorry for yourself. It helps a lot. When I stop feeling sorry for myself, these late nights weren't as hard. You know what I'm saying? It's not that bad. You chose this life. We chose this life. <laughs>